Good morning, a Daily Bible reading. Today we're going to read from Leviticus chapter 11. Yesterday we saw um, <clears throat> the priests assume their responsibility as the intermediaries between God and human beings, his people in the tabernacle. We saw um, two of Aaron's sons meeting a sticky end when they offered what was described as strange fire unto the Lord whenever they worshipped disobediently. We saw um, Moses correcting the rest of the priests and telling them how important it was that the commands of God be followed in every detail. We move on today to see the institution of the Jewish dietary laws. We, we all know, I'm sure, that Jews are not, were not permitted to eat pork, they were permitted to eat pigs, but that is only a very small part of it. Um, God gave them these commands they weren't allowed to eat rabbits, they weren't allowed to eat hares, they weren't allowed to eat shellfish, uh, they weren't allowed to eat most birds of prey, they weren't allowed to eat most uh, they weren't allowed to eat most insects, they were allowed to eat most fish, but things like catfish and eels, which didn't have scales, they weren't allowed to, to eat. And this was it was quite a complicated and quite a um, quite a rigorous set of requirements. What was its purpose? Well, there were a number of purposes. The first is that God did not want his people to intermarry or mingle with other people, with peoples who lived around them. And this was a very clear way of setting them apart, of being extremely distinctive and of preventing an observant Jew, an observant Hebrew from, uh, from mingling and intermarrying and eating with uh, people, who, uh, people who were not from that nation uh, and with all the attendant socialization and intermingling and mixing and uh, syncretic religion uh, that we actually see happening in later uh, Old Testament times when the Kingdom of Israel in particular comes up with a sort of mix mishmash of religions based on their intermarriage with people from around them disobediently. And it, uh, it's a way that God's people can obey him. It's important that uh, we have a way to serve God. And this is one of the ways in which God chooses that we should serve him. Ultimately, uh, all of our service to him is valueless in the sense that it doesn't add anything to him. But it's valuable to him in that it pleases him. So obedience pleases. This is a way of, of, of people being able to obey. This, of course, um, comes to an end. In the New Testament, whenever the Apostle Peter is shown uh, a big sheet filled with unclean animals, told to erase, kill and eat, uh, and then told that uh, he should not call unclean anything that God made, has made clean, um, showing that the children of Israel are no longer simply the chosen people who are to be a part instead, all of God's people, all those who he calls into faith uh, equally, whether we are Jews or Gentiles. It doesn't matter. We are all God's people. Leviticus 11. This is God's word. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts of which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the swain, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch, they are unclean to you. They shall ye eat of those that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them ye shall eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall even be an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, they shall not be eaten, they are an abomination. The eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, 
and the little owlin, the cormorant, and the great owlin, the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flaying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all with upon the earth. Even these of them ye shall eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean, whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof, and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, these are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even, they are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the even. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even. So it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel whereto, whereinto any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it, shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. For all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh, shall be unclean. And all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth, shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down. For they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. And if any beast of which you may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass, of it shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it, shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, shall be an abomination, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination." Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. To be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beasts. And of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. Amen.